Welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! History with Joe Girlando. In today's video, Sean and I are going to play the Zombie Card of Safe Return variant versus the Perfect Circle Monarch deck that Jonathan Labonte used at Shonen Jump Washington 2007. I am personally going to be running the Super Friends Zombie variant while Sean is going to be playing the Perfect Circle Monarch deck. I personally think the Zombie deck is a better matchup. But with three Rise of the Storm Monarch and three Phoenix Wing Wing Blast, it is definitely going to be an interesting match. So let's take a look at our opening hand here. So this is honestly not the most ideal six cards. There's honestly nothing off the top of my deck that would really make my hand terribly explosive. It's a pretty slow-paced hand. With this opening hand, I have a couple different options. The first option is to summon Card Trooper in Mill 3, hoping to fuel the graveyard with potentially zombie monsters. I can also set giant rat. I think it's unlikely that my opponent would attack a face down giant rat, assuming that it's either rat or pyramid turtle from his perspective. Both of those would progress my game state. I think it might be more likely for me to be able to summon card trooper mill three and then perhaps on the second turn crash my giant rat into presumably something like a stratus that he would normal summon. And then maybe that would begin progressing my game state a little bit, and then maybe I can get some incremental eventual advantage by milling zombies off of Card Trooper. That's one option. I could also just set the Card Trooper. That's another option. And then flip it and attack into something like a Stratos. I also should note that I shouldn't assume my opponent's running Perfect Circle Monarch, although I know Sean is in fact running Perfect Circle Monarch. So assuming that I would play this turn totally blind, not having any idea what my opponent is running, I think the options are still between Card Trooper and Giant Rat, and I think I'm actually going to summon the Card Trooper in Mill 3. And then just pass. Alright, that was actually pretty good. I, I milled a card to save return, which is a bit of a power card, but I did, at the bare minimum, get some zombies into the grave. This Giant Rat in my hand represents a, a either an Ill Blood or a Zombie Master in the future. You can just crash a rat into a turtle. That's partially why you run giant rat in the first place. And then when you do so, you can then crash the turtle and eventually go into a zombie master. So having even a singular giant rat is a big deal. So here on Sean's turn, like I mentioned, the most likely opening plays range from anything from summoning Mystic Tomato to summoning something like a Stratos. I think knowing that I'm running zombies, which is now known to him fully, He's going to be unwilling to summon a monster that I could crash into. So I think there's a reasonable chance that this could be something like a Mystic Tomato. Though other monsters that he could set, just briefly looking over his deck list, include Spirit Reaper, Sangin, Treeborn Frog, and then actually his own Card Trooper. Though if I think he had Card Trooper, I just presume he would mill three and crash or attack over. That way I can't crash on the following turn. I would just have to attack over with a Giant Rat or a Turtle. I'm no, I'm 100% going to Nobleman this turn. I want to get that off the board. The question is, how do I want to progress my game state from there? I think there are a few different options. Brain Control is only at one, and Snatch Steel was banned heading into this format. So if I put a second monster on the board, I'm risking the possibility of Brain Rise Up, but it's not super likely. He would need both, obviously, the single Brain and then a Rise Up or a Zaborg. I think I'm going to start by milling three. I don't think that that's going to change my plays at all, but it will continue to put zombies into the graveyard, so that's good. I've definitely gotten plenty of zombies in the graveyard now for future Book of Lifes. Obviously, Premature Burial is gone, but there's still Call of the Haunted. And then, unfortunately, I've milled both Zombie Masters. There's a benefit and a detriment to that. Now, if I draw one Zombie Master, it threatens three, because Zombie Master can revive Zombie Master to revive Zombie Master. With that being said, I think what I'm going to do here is Nobleman across out attack for 19 and set Morphing Jar with the Mystical Space Typhoon. There's a possibility where I'll be able to Snipe Hunter and get a Morphing Jar effect off, and I think he's going to be unwilling to attack my face down monster in, a, in the belief that it's likely going to be a Recruiter. So I think I could get some nice card advantage, and I guess it will depend what this Nobleman hits. It will give me some knowledge. Okay, so Treebone Bone Frog. Yeah, so the options here are now to summon the Giant Rat and start to push for damage or just attack for 19. And I think there's a possibility that I can get some good card advantage by doing it like this. Because Illblood's pretty dead in my hand. Snipe Hunter is becoming dead right now because I only have two cards to ditch. If I can get this Morphing Jar effect off, I think I'll be in really good shape. And from this current position, now that he doesn't have access to Treebone Frog, the amount of cards that he could have are pretty limited. Alright, so Heavy Storm's a little annoying. Maybe he does have Brain Control and... Uh, oh, Cyber Dragon. Alright, so we did have Cyber Dragon. And this is going to be a Ryza to spin this to the top of my deck. Oh! Okay, that's even worse. Yep, that's about the worst case scenario. 
I will get a draw out of it, and there are a lot of good live draws from here. That's definitely not one of them. I can crash the Giant Rat, though. So it's not the absolute end of the world. I think what I'm going to do, though, is Snipe Hunter and try and bait out what's probably Phoenix Wing Wing Blast. That would be the most likely card that you would set, because if it's a Wing Blast and you don't have a good discard outlet... Well, actually, no, it's probably not Wing Blast. So there's two reasons. There's two things to talk about. If it was Wing Blast, he would have just kept it in hand with Treeborn Frog. Because that's the best card, if not the second best card, if you want to consider Malicious to Ditch. So I actually think it's not likely to be Wing Blast because he would have just kept it in his hand with Treeborn Frog. So this card is now presumably going to be something, something else. Something that if Treeborn hits the graveyard, you can't readily activate comfortably. So it could be anything from the Transmigration Prophecy... Could be called Mahanda now that he has a Cyber Dragon in the grave. So I think I think presumably the thing to do here is to Snipe Hunter and see if I can get my opponent to invest a little bit more. And then I can always threaten the Giant Rat play in the future. So I'm going to summon and call priority, send this to the grave, and target the Zaborg. If my opponent has Torrential, he needs to use it here. Well, all right, we'll see what happens. All right. All right, we'll ditch this one. Same deal. And now we'll attack for 15. If this is Call of the Haunted, which is one of the possibilities here, he could activate it to save the damage. If you were to activate Call of the Haunted, I'd honestly just let it go through, and then I have this follow-up. Granted, it assumes I don't draw the last Koki. If I draw the last Koki, it doesn't work. But it's a good chance that this is Call again. Call with 3-1 Frog, they're not good friends of each other. You can't activate Call and then bring back the Frog in that same turn, so there's a pretty good chance that this is Call the Haunted. Oh, or he is premature, and that works too. All right, so we're looking at 900 damage here. How much more can he do? Honestly, okay, I would... I'm about to say, I wouldn't mind if he just summoned something like a Monarch right there. Okay... Turtle. Oh, this is interesting. I have the opportunity just of setting one of these recruiters, and I think he would have tributed for a monarch last turn if he had the ability to do so. And even if he does last turn, he only drops me to 27, and then I still have the play of crashing. Now at least the pyramid tolls. So I think I'm actually just going to set this giant rat and pass. If he doesn't have a comfortable answer to this, it puts him in a tough place. This could still theoretically be a wing bust that he drew the turn after. All right, so he does have something here. All right. Yep. So the options here are to set the Giant Rat. I think I'm just going to continue to set the Giant Rat. He's going to need to have another Monarch to continue this. And again, I still don't think this is Wing Blast. Oh, that's a really tough one. Yeah. Yep. That would be game. All right, so going into the side deck, we're definitely going to put in the Pulling the Rugs. I think those are the best cards for this matchup. We talked about that in a couple of the deck profiles. The difference between the deck that I'm running and the deck that I profiled is I'm running an extra copy of Giant Rat as opposed to an extra third Cyber Dragon. So I think I can cut one of the Giant Rats. I kind of hate Snipe Hunter, so I think I'm going to cut Snipe Hunter because I don't like Snipe Hunter in any deck. I think you can also cut Card Trooper. I don't think it really does anything all that meaningful. I think you eventually get zombies in the graveyard. All you need really is one turtle, and you get plenty of zombies in the grave. I'm also going to go first, so I'm going to put in the Dust Shoot. I could see myself cutting the Widespread Ruin. Widespread Ruin's not the greatest card. I think this configuration's probably fine. Nobleman hits enough cards in his deck, I think. Well, maybe it doesn't. I mean, it's going to hit something like Fearmonger... The cards that it could hit are really important cards to hit. Cards like Fearmonger, though he could summon that in attack mode. Tomato, though, same deal. Treeborn Frog, though, same deal. I could see myself cutting these Noble Mittens. I think that would be reasonable, but I'm going to keep him in and see how he plays this game. And if I feel like they're dead, then obviously I'll take them out for game three. All right, well, this hands something else. I'll just set a shoot and say go. That's the only thing I can do with this hand. Zombie Master can only special summon level 4 or lower, so I can't actually summon either of these big monsters. I think my hand's so bad that I need to just 
dust shoot. I don't think I can risk. Yeah, this was the card I was worried about, this reinforcement of the army here, but it is what it is. Let's see. So, it's a pretty good hand. He's just going to go Stratos, get Disc Commander, have Disc Commander with Crush Guard Virus. Yeah. Yeah, that's just gonna about going to do it. All right, what can I draw to help somehow get out of this? I'd have to draw a zombie monster that I can summon. That would be the best case scenario. If I draw a zombie monster that I can summon and somehow go into a stream of zombies, what's the best thing that can possibly happen? Well, it would be that he goes Stratos, get Disc, on the t following turn, T-Set, Crush with Disc, and then on the following turn, be left with Cyber Dragon, Tomato, Zaborg. I guess the best thing would be for him to somehow summon Cyber Dragon and then me be able to creature swap it with something like a turtle that I draw on that turn. That would be really ideal. And then and then he would just set the tomato with the Zaborg, and I wouldn't really have a way of being able to respond to that. I guess the best thing I can do is take I think the Zaborg in the long run is the most annoying card. Just the ability to go Cyber Zaborg, I think, counteracts a lot of my comeback plays. Because I'm basically going to need to draw a Recruiter on the next turn, or in the coming turns, particularly after Crush Card Virus. And if I draw a Recruiter and he just Zaborgs it, I'm not going to be in good shape. He has the option right now of just going for Rota Disc Commander. I wouldn't necessarily think that that's the best play. I open so passively, I think he can assume that my hand's not all that great, and there's really no big deal in waiting another turn. I mean, he absolutely could. Yeah. That's fine. It's obviously not good for me, but nothing I can do about it. Yep. So he's got Tomato Crush Cyber. Let's see what we draw. That's actually probably one of the best draws I could get is a card that can revive from here. I will show my hand. Call of the Haunted, card of safe return. Which, I think I'm just going to set and activate. I, I don't think I can really wait all that long. I think I kind of need to draw... Well, I guess I could wait. I, I guess I could just set the call and then call the ill blood. Yeah, I, I don't have to play call the hunted on his turn. I, I do risk him drawing into wing blast though, which kind of disrupts all of this. So, I think at the point of the game that we're in, what can I realistically play around? Hmm. His hand is Tomato, Cyber Dragon, and Malicious. His hand's actually not incredible. I guess I guess the fact that there's three Wing Blasts and only one Heavy, which is one of the most afraid of, is going to make me play it like this. I really don't want him to draw Wing Blast, and then I call of a Haunted on my turn, and he chains Wing Blast, and then I'm in a really bad position, I think, at that point. Card to save return going to the top of the deck when I'm not drawing in anything is really rough. So here's an interesting decision. Do I just call the Haunted the Ill Blood here? I think you could argue that it's part... It's possible to do that how else am i going to really deal with the tomato the tomato at this point can go into sangin and i don't think there's anything incredible that sangin gets right now i guess there's fearmonger there is absolutely fearmonger that is a little frustrating but i'm going to make this ill blood play next turn because then i can gemini summon ill blood and special summon another monster and get two draws out of it so i think i'm just going to summon the ill blood because there's no other way of me right now Granted, yes, I know he can crash the Fearmonger, but I'm actually kind of okay with this. I'm going to get a, a draw off of the card of safe return. And I might be able to deal enough damage. He's going to get Fearmonger. Yeah, so he's going to get Fearmonger, and he's going to take 1,100 damage to crash into the Illblood right now. Oh, no. All right, that's interesting. I kind of forgot that he could get Snipe Hunter, but that's fine. All right, that's fine. Well, only fair. 
Happened to me last game. Yeah, this is actually pretty interesting. I'm in pretty decent shape here, actually. Now he just has Cyber Dragon in hand. Yeah, okay, that's fine. All right. Oh, that was a perfect draw. Good old Pyramid Turtle. So now I'll go Pyramid Turtle. I could swap. I don't really have to swap. I could just attack and then get Zombie Master. I, I don't need to Pyramid. I don't need to Creature Swap. No. It doesn't really do anything. It just gives me Snipe Hunter, which is unnecessary. That way I can go Creature Swap Sangin with his Cyber Dragon next turn. Yeah, that that's, makes more sense. So I'll take 300 here. I want to keep the turtles in my deck because they're actually really good draws here. And I'm just going to get Zombie Master, attack over, go to main phase two. I, I guess I meant to say creature swap the turtle on the next turn, not the the other way around. I could get the, the Zombie Master, but it doesn't actually do anything when he summons Cyber Dragon. So I have to just get the Pyramid Turtle here. And then I'll draw, reveal Torrential Tribute. And I guess I'll just set the Torrential. That's fine. And pass. Now his hand is just Cyber Dragon. He has Malicious Engrave, but that doesn't really affect you too much. Yep, that's fine. Attack Zombie Master for 300. Yep, I'm not torrentialing this. That tomato... At this point now, I'm, I would definitely make that Fearmonger play that he could have made a couple turns ago. Yep. He needs the draws. Yep. This is fine. I might be able to beat him next turn, honestly. Because I'm going to creature swap this turtle to him. Granted, the Zombie Master's not going to be on the board, so I guess I'm not going to be able to OTK, but... I'll be able to do a good amount of damage next turn. There was some discussion for leaving the Fearmonger on the board. Ah, uh, do I show him that? I showed him the Torrential and the Turtle. So yeah, he saw the, the all the cards so far. So that's actually potentially a really good draw. But we're going to swap this, go into the battle phase and attack. And I didn't draw a monster, so I can't just get Zombie Master and use the effect. But I still think it might be the correct play to get Zombie Master in the first place. I only elected to put one Illblood in the deck. And otherwise, I would get ill blood so I could Gemini summon it on the next turn. But I think I'm just going to hedge. I could also just get Turtle, honestly. Because if he draws a monster that attacks over the Zombie Master, that would be annoying because I'd get no value. At least by getting Pyramid Turtle, it's kind of awkward for him to deal with. And he puts anything in attack mode, I can just crash and basically get the Zombie Master then. So I think just going to the Turtle is probably fine. And then setting this, pulling the rug. There are scenarios here where I just totally get blown out. If he draws something like Heavy Storm and a Monarch, that would be obviously really disheartening. But... I already think I was kind of behind after that turn one crush card, and the fact that I'm in reasonable shape right now I think is pretty good. Let's see what he can do. All right, set monster. Set back row. Okay, okay. So I guess there's a situation where I wish I got Zombie Master, but it is what it is. Here I think I'm just going to try and attack over the creatures. Yep, that's fine. We'll end the turn. No need to summon the rat, set the rat, or do anything. There's even a universe where I torrential pretty soon, so I don't want to invest more onto the board. In addition to that, turtle and tomato, a turtle and rat are obviously really redundant, so obviously no need to put that on the board. More pulling the rugs. Yeah, I'm not going to set that. I already have one. I could attack. I think it's reasonable to attack just to flip it up. Just so that I know what it is to confirm that it's Spear Reaper. 
My deck does have brain control in it, so if I do a draw brain control, I will want this face up. I actually don't really mind if he mirror forces. I think he would have... Yeah, okay. I don't mind if he mirror forces. And this also continues to confirm that that's not mirror force. So I'm fine keeping these into attack mode. That might seem odd, but on the last turn, he didn't mirror force. Okay, he's banishing militias. Why is he banishing militias? Oh, he's going to tribute for a monarch? Hmm. That's fine. Yeah, I guess you don't want to tribute Rise if you don't have to. It'll be interesting to see what monarch is coming. Probably Zaborg. Zaborg's the one from this perspective that's probably the best. Do you want to get rid of Turtle completely? The question is, do I Torrential or do I Rug? I think... I think I Rug this. I rug this, because he can target something that's not a monster on the board, and that would be, obviously, catastrophic. So I have, I have to rug this. I mean, if I knew what he targeted, but it's a counter trap, I have to find out what he... I have to activate it before he gets to target. It's been a long time since I've used pulling the rug, so I had to do it in that sequence. In a perfect world, he targets a monster. I was honestly thinking it's a Borg more than Ryza. If it was a Borg, I would have definitely just done it that way. I'm going to put this into defense now. There's no point just leaving it into attack now that we've confirmed with that that we've, that face down is not mirror force so we'll just put it to defense okay so now he's going to tribute for another monarch okay um that's an interesting one i could just rug this too Yeah, we'll rug that too. Dust Tornado, that's not the worst draw. I think at this point I will just pass. He just used his brain control, which is one of the best ways of clearing the Cyber Dragon and getting an attack with Reaper. I don't want to set Rat and get hit by Zaborg on the face down Rat. Rat's one of my best outlets right now into getting into some of the zombie engine. So I'm just going to pass in this game state. I'll let him invest more into the board. Now he knows I have the Torrential because I accidentally flipped it, but I will still might be able to at least stymie things. All right, Wing Blast. All right. This is fine. It's actually going to go to the top of his deck, which I don't think Cyber Dragon is the best draw in the world. So I'll take the 300. I'm okay with this because he discarded, you know, a Stratos. So we're basically one for one-ing. Uh, to Graveyard. He basically traded the Stratos in his hand for the MST in my hand, which is a pretty reasonable trade if you ask me. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's get rid of... Let's see, he still has Call of the Haunted and Premature Burial. So I'm going to get rid of the Disc Commander. And I'm going to summon probably the Ill Blood. Uh, and then we're going to draw a card... Then we're going to Gemini summon the Ill Blood to summon the Zombie Master. Draw a card. We'll put the Zombie Master to the graveyard to get a Zombie Master. Yeah. As you can see, sometimes all it takes is one card and it just completely shifts the course of the game, which was the case with that Book of Life. And then because we had a bunch of Zombie Masters in the grave, we just continually revived Zombie Masters and obviously won the game attacking over the Spirit Reaper. That was another reason why I didn't really mind the Reaper shot directly. Getting rid of that Reaper itself was a little annoying because I only had a couple outs to it. But with so many cards that would just win the game on the spot, it was eventual, an eventuality there. Heading into game three, I think I'll take out the Dust Shoot. And we'll put in... Let's see. I guess I could put in Snipe Hunter. I just don't like Snipe Hunter. His Snipe Hunter did work, though. I kind of forgot he had a Snipe Hunter option when he crashed the Tomato in that game. I think I'm going to put in Card Trip. I think it's just sort of a, a nice middle ground spot. I mean, I could put in the Bazoo package. I'm somewhat curious what that's like, but I feel like Merchant's a tough card to set against the Borg and Rises. I feel like you have enough set monsters. I would be kind of curious to see what that package is like, though. These six cards. I think because I'm putting Pulling the Rug in, I don't want to have that many cards in my deck, though, that are just 
contrary to the original engine. So we'll just make this easy little swap. Car Trooper attacks over Stratos on turn one. Man, I've opened Illblood all three games, and I'm only playing one to reduce how often I draw it. That's amazing. Yep. Yep, yep. Any recruiter here is pretty, pretty, pretty good. Recruiter is a very good draw. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to book of life in the midst of a, a iteration of that, but a recruiter is a good draw. A zombie master is an okay draw. I can try and crash the zombie master, which I think I'm going to do. It might force out a wing blast, and then I'll pass and not give him the opportunity to spend anything with Ryza or Zaborg. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And then I could book of life card to save for turn here. So we'll see. Pass priority attack. He might wing blast this. We'll see. All right. So I don't want to make the Book of Life card to save for turn play because I think in doing so, I'm going to get hit by Wing Blast. And I obviously don't want that. This could theoretically be Call the Hanu too, though you don't really set Call the Hanu without a monster in the graveyard in this matchup. I have some interesting options here. One of them is to set Nobleman and Creature Swap, which I know sounds really odd. But in doing so, I could elicit his Wing Blast and then a Ryza Summon. And then on my turn, I can... Book of Life, the Zombie Master, and at least get a draw out of it. I guess at that point I don't have the Recruiter for Swap, so it's actually not as ideal. I think here I'll just pass. There's the risk that he summons Reaper and attacks, which would be really bad. But I don't want to give him a comfortable Wing Blast Rise of play right now if I don't have a Recruiter to combo with this Creature Swap. Obviously the D-Draw is a pretty good draw, yeah. Just getting crushed today. Hopefully he hits the Illblood, maybe. He's going to hit card of safe return. The only good card in my hand. Of course. Uh -huh. All right, well. I think I'll lose Vortex. Discard Illblood. I could try to Book of Life the Illblood and make a little bit of a push, but... I'm just going to pass. Luckily, now there'll be no more Reapers. I need to draw into another card to save for turn. Having card to save for turn in my hand right now instead of something like Swap or Knock would be really nice. I could have Book of Life to banish the Malicious, but if I don't put any monsters on the field, there's no reason that he's going to Malicious because he can't summon Zaborg or Ryza. Yep. It draws good. I don't know, best case scenario, maybe he sets like Fearmonger and I can just Nobleman it. But he's so far ahead in card advantage now, it's going to take a lot for me to come back. I guess maybe the best case scenario is that I draw Morphing Jar of all cards so that I can Creature Swap and attack into Morphing Jar. Card Trip is a really bad one for me because it's just a floater that's going to deal damage and none of my cards really deal with it. Yeah, now he probably has a Wing Blast set. Wow. Well... 58. So the problem is if I set anything, he's just going to wing blast it. So kind of in a rough spot. Could book a life, ill blood, then he wing blast ill blood. I could. That's about it. That's about it. He could have Call of the Haunted now, too, which is just even worse. If I pass, I kind of need to pass. Hopefully, I draw something, and then the Wing Blast stops one play, and then the thing that I draw is the play that actually matters on the following turn. I guess if he has Call, he might be able to OTK me, but it's not a guarantee. I drop down to 39 off of the three milled 1900 Card Trooper. The highest monster he has in the graveyard is an 18, so it's not impossible that I lose here if he summons Tomato and plays Call of the Haunted, but... Plus Banish is malicious, yeah. This makes it more likely that he's going to OTK because he's 
removing the malicious before doing the card trooper in case he hits his second malicious. Again, malicious is limited to two in this format. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we got 27. How much more am I going to take? 37. Okay. Drops me down to 21. Heavy. All right, well, I can't just sit here. So I have to play card to save return, play Book of Life. Yeah. I will get Ill Blood and banish the Disc Commander. Any way that I have any opportunity. Okay, so DD Crow, yeah. That'll do it. He's just going to DD Crow the ill blood. That was really fun. Thank you for watching. Check back soon for more videos from not only this format, but just about every other format you can think of. Mm -hmm.